everyone. On behalf of the Friends of the West Bloomfield Library, welcome to our kickoff presentation of What's Cooking for the 2014-15 season. Johnny Ruckamore, Loretta Harris, Sharon Joya, Gloria Webley, and myself, Julie spina -Kalar. We are the Culinary Arts Committee of the Friends of the West Bloomfield Library. Now, Friends are enthusiastic supporters of the libraries and their programs. Since 2000, the Friends have donated over $325,000 to the library. So if you love our library as much as we do and want to support programs such as the What's Cooking program, please consider being a friend of the library. It costs as little as $10 a year. Now go on the library website, which is www.wblib.org for more information on how to be a friend. Now one mission of our Culinary Arts Committee is to introduce amateur culinary enthusiasts such as ourselves to professional culinary enthusiasts. So tonight, we are so excited to introduce to you one of the most outstanding culinary resources in the area, William Sonoma 12 Oaks of Novi. Our presenter this evening is Chef Donna Hollis, and she has been with William Sonoma 12 Oaks for over 10 years as a culinary instructor. She also has her own culinary business. It's called the Inspired Chef Personal Chef Service. She can make dinner for two, she can make dinner for 250. She is amazing. So please consider this as another resource. She is very well qualified for this evening. If you have questions, we ask that you write them down and pass them to the end of the aisle. Also, at the end of the presentation, there's going to be a hands-on demonstration of the spiralizer and a free spiralizer raffle giveaway, just like Oprah. So we are so <laughs> excited, so don't go anywhere. So now, please put your hands together to help me welcome Chef Donna Hollis, Tools and Techniques from the William Sonoma Kitchen. Thank you so much for being here tonight. I appreciate your attendance, and I hope the next hour is going to give you some ideas for healthy eating, introduce you to a great piece of equipment. We're going to do some uh, ideas for make-ahead uh, options for the holidays. And I'm uh, just really thrilled to be here, and so I thank the library and the Friends of the Library for their support. Um, just a little bit of paperwork to go through. If you haven't already, I think those that arrived early, in order to qualify and be a part of the Spiralizer giveaway, if you fill out this sheet of paper, just the top part, and then this is the piece of paper. If you have any questions and answer or questions for the Q&A, and then pass them to that side, and I will and answer as many questions as I can. And then this is a little uh, handout curriculum. We do a lot of culinary programs at the William Sonoma over at 12 Oaks Mall. And this is a curriculum that we did in July using the spiralizer. So this is uh, something that you would get anytime you came to our classes. I am not going to be using the recipes in here, but there's a lot of great information that I will be going over. We'll talk about that. And uh, then I just put in, we do have some classes coming up, so this is just lists of the upcoming classes. And with that, with no further ado, I tend to do, try to do too much in too short of a period of time, so I have lots to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do two different things with a spiralizer. I'm going to go, go ahead and walk you through what is a spiralizer, why would you want to uh, use one. And then we're going to do two uh, recipes. We're going to do a really quick zucchini noodle saute topped with some uh, pasta sauce. So one of the things that the spiral spiralizer will do is it literally lets you spiralize different vegetables. So why would you want to do that? There's a lot of people that have gluten intolerances. There's a lot of people that are trying to eat a more low carb diet. And so the idea of pasta, while I still eat it and I enjoy pasta, uh, when you can spiralize your zucchini or yellow squash or an eggplant and make it like pasta, you're kind of getting the benefit of pa the pasta without the gluten and the carbs. So that's uh, one way that you can use it. The other way is we're going to do a cucumber and carrot salad, and we're going to be able to spiralize the cucumber really, really thin. If you didn't have a chance to taste the salad, there's still some over on the uh, table over there. On your way out, you can pick some up, and I will uh, go through exactly how I made that. So let me just show you and introduce you to the spiralizer. There's a three blades, there's a straight blade, and we use that if you want to do like potato chips or sweet potato chips. 
Then there's two different blades here that's actually going to spiralize and make noodles. There's a small one and a thick one. And the recipes that I'm doing tonight, I actually selected so that I'm going to use each one of the blades so that you can see how it works. And then I have a tray back here when I'm done with the two recipes. I have a tray of just some miscellaneous vegetables. So I'll give you some additional ideas of how you could use the spiralizer. Uh, just a note, at the end of the program, we um, have two other spiralizers uh, off to the uh, side of the wall and here. So if you want to try it and get some hands-on uh, experience, you'll be able to do that as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, we're going to do zucchini noodles first. So I'm going to take my uh, large julienne blade, pop that in there. In the meantime, I'm actually going to... This is the trouble you have when you are cooking, not in a kitchen. So you have to make do. So I have my little, this is a little induction burner. And one of the things that's really important when you're cooking is to make sure your pan is hot before you put your food in. So pan's uh, heating up while I'm going to spiralize this. And I have my knife over here. So I'm just going to cut the ends off the zucchini. So some people might want to cut the zucchini in half, or you can just use it whole. But in each of these blades, there's a little hole right there. That goes right in the middle of whatever you're going to spiralize. So I'm going to put my zucchini here. And then this, it has the little prongs. That goes into the back end of the zucchini. I have a little handle that I can push. But if you watch here, I'm going to try to turn that so most of you can see. And see how it comes out as a generally continuous little noodle. This actually works really well on your kitchen counter. This will adhere to it. It just won't do it on the uh, tablecloth or on my cutting board. So there we go. So that's as easy as that for getting zucchini noodles. And then, with everything, you get a little bit left over. So this is really every family is different. Some people compost. Some people have you know, pets that you can feed. Or you can just take this and chop it up. And then you could saute this, use that for a different purpose. Okay. I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil and feel my pan's getting to a getting warm. I can see it sort of shiver, shimmer. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. And I'm going to put the zucchini in. So you can hear it uh, sizzle. If your food doesn't sizzle when you put it in the pan, it, your pan's not hot enough. You want it to sizzle but not burn. And then you always season. Oops. There we go. So this is actually one of my favorite uh, favorite pepper mills. It's a gravity pepper mill. You just turn it upside down, and if it doesn't fall apart, then <laughs> see this is live TV. It's not live TV. You never know what you're going to get, though. All right, so then we're just going to toss this. So this really becomes personal preference. If you like your vegetables pretty well cooked, if you like them crunchy, you can actually serve the zucchini raw. You don't have to saute it. But to give this kind of the taste and feel of pasta, I'm going to saute this for a little bit. I didn't, but you certainly could just add some uh, onions or some shallots, some other kinds of uh, vegetables. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this. All right, then I'm going to take this out. There is a little storage area right down here. Usually don't store the dirty ones down here. You usually store the clean ones there. But I'm just going to get that out of the way, out of sight, out of mind. All right. So I did a couple of weeks ago for one of my clients, I did a um, zucchini and yellow squash mix, sauteed it, and then just uh, added pesto to it. And it was really just a nice, light dish, different than what we're going to do today. You could just saute it and simply top it with Parmesan cheese. Uh, you know, you're going to have to kind of, a 
everybody eats pasta different and has different uh, tastes and preferences. But all right, so I'm just going to go ahead, add a little bit of pasta sauce. So what we're using today, and you're going to get a sample of this at the end of the uh, class. We have a variety of so pasta sauces. The one I'm using today is a balsamic and roasted garlic. So add, add that. And then I'm going to top it with a little bit of Parmesan cheese, because you can never have too much cheese. And quite honestly, that's as easy as it is. Mm -hmm. So now we have zucchini noodles, fresh, low carb. I am going to take and put this on a platter here so you can see how it plates. So dish one done. So one of the things when you're cooking that's really important is to make sure that you have everything that you need together before you start cooking. It makes the job a whole lot easier. It also makes sure that you don't uh, run out of ingredients or you think you have some ingredients until you're halfway through the cooking process mm -hmm. and you uh, don't have what you thought you did. So I'm going to, this, it's called mise en place. It means everything in its place. Mise en place, there's lots of French culinary terms, and mise en place is a uh, French term literally meaning everything in its place. So you see I had all of my zucchini uh, ingredients here. Now I'm going to do a cucumber and carrot salad. I'm going to make a little dressing of uh, olive oil and white balsamic. You can use whatever kind of uh, dressing you want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the cucumber, and I'm going to put in the, just the straight blade. That goes down like that. I'm going to cut, cut off the ends. And then, this is really too long. It's too long to fit on this. So I am going to take and cut this in half. But again, real easy. So this is just a way, the spiralizer is a way to really get more vegetables onto uh, your plate. Use vegetables that you have been cooking with for years just a little bit differently. It's also a way to sneak some vegetables into maybe a picky eater's uh, diet. <laughs> so you can also see now instead of the long noodles, this turns out to kind of be like a ribbon. So I call it the ribbon or cucumber ribbon salad. You know, one cucumber goes a long ways when you do it like this. All right. So again, that's either for compost or snacking. I'm going to do the whole cucumber here. So it almost starts to self-propel once it uh, gets caught onto the blade. There is a little handle here that you can push. Like I said, it's easier when this isn't moving around like it is on my uh, cutting board. Is that a seed this? Uh, the, you know what I've used? This is the English. This is the English cucumber. It's the cucumber that I prefer. So they call it seedless. I mean, there technically are seeds in there, but there's uh, the seeds are smaller and uh, not quite as uh, bitter. So these are. It's my cucumber of choice, but I know a lot of uh, people that grow cucumbers grow the standard cucumber. Okay. So I'm going to take this. Now one of the things, if you want to plate this kind of fancy and do a whole ribbon on a plate and then whoever is eating that can just cut it at their plate, you can do that. The other thing that you can actually do is take shears and cut like that. I think some people forget to uh, use your kitchen shears. It's really, really a great tool. Or you certainly could just take your knife and cut, but this is going to make it a little bit more uh, manageable. So I'm going to put that into my salad bowl over here. And I'm going to change out the blade. And I'm going to use 
Now this is the small, um, small Julian blade, so we're going to get smaller pieces of the carrots. So I put that in there. So the carrot beet is a lot harder vegetable than the uh, cucumber and the zucchini, but it still works great. So one of the things that I'm noticing, and you might also look at and wonder, you know, I've got a little bit of uh, green color on my nice white spiralizer and some orange from the carrot. So the way that I clean this when I'm at the uh, store is I actually just soak it in a little bit of bleach water and it comes right back to white with no problem. You want to clean the blades with a uh, brush because they're really uh, sharp. So you can see the carrots coming through. So what you will find based on the uh, size and the circumference of whatever you're cutting. See, the carrots, some of them are long noodles and some of them just get cut. It's just the way the blade kind of catches this carrot. And when it doesn't push in any further, you know you're done. Pull this out. Again, if you have little uh, critters that you feed, or this is perfect for compost. So I'm going to add my uh, carrots and my zucchini, or um, cucumber together. Somewhere, I think I have some tongs. So what I want to do is I want to put a little salt and pepper on this. Now, I am neither a doctor nor a nutritionist, and at this point in my life, thank goodness, I've been very healthy, so I don't have any dietary restrictions. I know there's a lot of people who really watch their sodium um, intake, and obviously that's important, and you have to follow whatever um, diet works best for you or whatever your diet, a doctor recommends. But one of the things that's important is if you season as you go along, if you season when you cook, you're going to use less salt and less sodium than if you season at the table. They've done studies, and if you uh, take the uh, salt shaker at the table and pour it on your um, dinner plate, you're winding up with so much more sodium than if you just take a little bit of salt. I know it looks like I'm using a lot, but it's a lot less, and this is going, you know, this is four or five or six servings. All right, so that's seasoned, and then I'm going to make, I'm going to kind of get this out of the way now. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little vinaigrette. So I haven't had bottled vinegar in my uh, kitchen in, I don't know, probably 20 years. It's just so easy to make. So I'm just using extra virgin olive oil. You know, picking out extra virgin olive oil is like picking out wine. There really are a lot of different varieties. Some of the olive oils will be spicy, some will be peppery, some will be almost floral, some just have a real um, mild flavor. So you have to find the flavor that suits you. And then I'm using, this is one of my favorite ingredients. Uh, I think we're all familiar with uh, balsamic vinegar, and I'm right at the very bottom. But this is white balsamic. And it's delicious. And the reason that I like this on this particular salad is if I used a dark balsamic, it's just going to darken the cucumber. It's not going to be particularly attractive to eat. So now I'm going to take my vinaigrette, season it just a little bit, salt, and a little bit of pepper. And that's how easy it is to make your own vinaigrette. If you make this, put it in a little Tupperware container, put it in your refrigerator. I mean, this will kind of save indefinitely in your refrigerator. With the olive oil will solidify. That doesn't mean it's gone bad. It just means you have to pull it out of your uh, refrigerator, put it on your counter, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes before you're going to uh, reuse it, and then just stir it up. And I didn't bring my tasting spoon, so I'm just going to assume that this is perfectly seasoned and tastes perfect. But you always want to taste as you go along. So all I'm doing here is I'm just tossing my cucumbers with the carrots. So these are ideas that just give you there we go. Just new ways to use familiar ingredients. So there you go. So I hope everybody got a sample of this when you walked in. If you didn't, we've got some more at the end of uh, 
the presentation? What, how's that looking sound? Doesn't it look good? So if you want to think about what, what you could use this, at, how much you could make ahead of time, you could go ahead and just grate up your um, carrots a day or two ahead of time. That's fine. The uh, cucumbers, you know, they're going to release a lot of water. So what I would do is I would put some paper towels down in maybe a, a big tray, line it with your ribbon cucumbers, put some more paper towels on top, and you can just put that in your refrigerator. So it's going to kind of soak up the uh, water. And then I, I wouldn't do that too far ahead, maybe early in the day if you're going to serve this for dinner. And then the uh, zucchini noodles, you can actually, what we're serving later on, I spiralized, sauteed, and did all of that yesterday, then brought it over here, and then all I did was added the pasta sauce to heat it up. So, all right, so two of those. So, let's see. So one of the things that I actually have been amazed with is on the back of this curriculum, there's a gal, Allie, and she loves the spiralizer. So she has actually uh, has a website called inspiralize.com, and I would recommend that you go to that uh, website. You're going to learn how to uh, spiralize a wide variety of fruits and vegetables that, quite frankly, I hadn't even thought about. But I'm going to show you a couple right now. So I'm going to pull this little tray over. We're just going to do a couple of extra ones. So I'm not making anything with this. I just wanted to give you an idea of other items that you could use. Well, of course, there's the potato. So this is just a regular russet potato. My preference, quite frankly, because I love sweet potatoes. So this, you could do sh shoestring fries. And we've done that at the store quite frequently. So these shoestring fries, see that? Then you could, that's the same one I did the carrots, but now I'm going to kind of do a mid, mid shift switch. And I want to take my straight edge. So this, you know, potato chips get that such a bad name, but you can bake your chips. So now I'm going to take my potato. I've got my shoestring potatoes. And now we're going to do just the potato like the ribbon like we did for the, uh, with the cucumber. And this works perfect. You toss this with some oil or flavored oil. Lay these all out on, on a half sheet pan, which is like this. Season it with salt and pepper and just put it in the oven and um, bake it. I put it at about 375 and bake it until they're crispy. So now you get your, your little potato chips. It's delicious. Okay. So the other thing that I thought was real interesting about this spiralizer, I love broccoli. And I may be one of the few people, but hopefully not. I actually like the broccoli stem better than the uh, florets. And when I mention that to people, half the, half the people I tell that to, they don't even realize that you can eat the broccoli stem. It's actually my favorite part. So you can take your broccoli stems and you can spiralize them. So you could, I'm not going to do it uh, right now because just for the sake of showing you, but I would peel the, uh, peel the broccoli stem. And then what you want to do is you want to find the thickest broccoli stems. But we're just going to pretend that's all. And I'm going to do a larger noodle. So the way I would um, use my broccoli stems is you can saute them, or you can use these broccoli stems for coleslaw. So just eat them, eat them raw. So. so this is with the large julienne blade. I'm going to take the next one. So see how that spiralizes your broccoli stem. And I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to use the small little julienne. There we go. 
So you can see right away the um, difference in the size. So this would be really perfect for coleslaw. Compost, coleslaw. So I just think using the uh, broccoli stem, whether you use it with a spiralizer or whether you just chop it, uh, chop it up and saute, that's a part of your vegetable you really want to use. Then the last vegetable that I brought just to show and give you a, another idea, let me get rid of this, is the sometimes overwhelming and unwieldy uh, butternut squash. So I love squash. They're certainly coming into season uh, now. What you want to do, and I already did this, is you just want to cut off. So we're going to use the neck. So when you purchase a uh, butternut squash, I always look for the ones with the longer neck. It's a lot easier to deal with, with than the uh, bulb and all of the seeds. So I cut that right there. And then I uh, took the skin off. And then we're going to do so this because it's so um, such a dense vegetable. I'm going to cut this in half. There we go. And I'm going to put that right there. I'm going to come behind like this. And now we're going to oops. So now what I would do with the butternut squash, you could put that right into your saute pan and saute it or put it on a half sheet pan and again you could uh, roast it. Oops. Doesn't want to catch. There you go. All right, so you get the idea. So now it's just a different way. So you could now turn butternut squash into butternut squash uh, pasta, just like we did with the zucchinis. All right. So this is a way to just utilize the things that we're getting now from the farmer's market and the produce stands. Uh, it just kind of gives you a, a different twist. It's a way to eat healthier. You don't have to give up the gluten or carbs if you don't want, but it certainly gives you a way to eat them a little bit uh, less frequently. Add lots of different colors. So we have the green and the orange. Eat the color of the rainbow, and that produces a very healthy diet. All right. So that's where we're going to end with a spiralizer. So I don't have a little band of merry people that's going to clean this up for me. So I'm just going to get this all out of the way. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of move into the holiday season, which is coming up. We're going to give you some ideas for make-ahead meals. All right. And we're done with this. And somewhere over here, I have a, a little cleaning bucket. So this is the other thing, too. It really helps you be clean as you go in the kitchen. Start with a clean counter. It's a whole lot easier, more enjoyable. OK, so we are going to. Start making some stuffing. All right, so I'm putting this back on. I'm going to turn that on. I want this. So again, I want my pan to get warm. And then what I'm going to do, I've already chopped up some onions and celery. So when you think about ways to plan your meals, plan for entertaining, 
plan for the holidays, if you have family coming in. Uh, so these are, this is just a great example of some things that you can do ahead of time. So you don't have to wait till the last day, and do everything all at once. Kind of break your recipe down and think, what could I do the day before? What could I do two days before? Uh, and there's no reason that you can't chop up your celery, chop up your onions. What I would do at home, and I often do with my catering business, got them in my Ziploc bags. Now, on my Ziploc bags, I'm going to label it. I'm going to say, this is for the stuffing. That's so the onions don't get mixed up with, you might have onions for a different recipe. So what I'm using today is a focaccia bread stuffing from Williams Sonoma. It's really tasty. We've been selling this for as long as I've been with this um, store. You can add anything you want to the stuffing to make it your own. What I'm going to do tonight is a really simple recipe. We're going to add some uh, olive oil here. You can use butter if you want. Everything's better with butter. Butter has a lower smoke point, so sometimes you'll see a recipe that says olive oil and butter, and the oil has a higher smoke point, butter has a low smoke point. If you put them together, then it kind of raises the smoke point of the uh, butter so you don't burn. And grab another. So you can hear it sizzle. Again, if it, it's not sizzling, it's not hot enough. So I've got my carrots or my um, onions and my celery. Again, season as you go along. It's pepper. And some salt. So this is one of my favorite uh, tools. It's called a gravity pepper mill. It is battery operated. So, but there's nothing to push. Some of the battery operated ones have a button that you push and the um, pepper, or salt or pepper comes down this way. This, it's just a one hand operation. All you do is turn it upside down. So, this is great. Um, oops, you know what, hang on, I can't hear because I'm standing right over the sizzling. Okay, somebody asked? That's a very good question. It is a tr by Trudeau. Trudeau, T-R-U-D-E-A-U. All right. So now when you think about what you, uh, every family has a different preference of how you make your stuffing. If I tried to serve stuffing with dried fruit in it in my family, my dad wouldn't have a very happy holiday because he doesn't care for dried fruit in his stuffing. But you could add dry fruit. You could add sausage. You could add mushrooms. You could just leave it as simple as it is right now with the uh, celery and the onions and our focaccia bread stuffing. You know, that's the really important part of the um, stuffing is the, you know, the flavor and the density of your um, bread or your croutons or whatever you're um, going to use. And we're going to finish it up with some chicken stock. And the recipes on the back, it's always a good idea, and I do this no matter what, is to just check. So the olive oil's in there, the one onion, one yellow onion, and three celery stalks. That's what I had chopped up yesterday. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to add the stuffing, and then I'm going to add my uh, chicken broth. So this is either going to get baked, you're going to use it to stuff your uh, turkey, or you could put it into a slow cooker. So that's one of the things you want to think about as you're entertaining is how much oven space do you have? How, much, uh, how many burners on the stove do you have? What can you make ahead and put into a slow cooker that will keep things warm? When you came in and you got the butternut squash soup, which we're going to make next, the butternut squash soup, I made that uh, a couple of hours ago and it's just sitting in a, uh, it's sitting in a slow cooker. There we go. Um, keeping warm. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to add my chicken stock. And then this is what I would just transfer either into a baking dish or a um, slow cooker. 
if you want, if there's a lot of people that do uh, vegetarian, you could use vegetable stock instead of the chicken stock. So we are going to call that done. And you can do this a day ahead. Okay. I'm going to move this out of the way. And we're going to come right back here. And now we're going to make some butternut squash soup. So again, I have everything together, my mise en place, using our butternut squash puree. So this, so here's what I did ahead of time, is I already have my onion sauteed. I wanted to kind of speed things along. But I did not saute the garlic. What you want to do, garlic will burn pretty quickly. So I always get my onion sauteed, and then at the very last minute, you can throw the garlic in. And all it needs is about 30 seconds, and immediately you're going to smell it. And that's called blooming the, uh, blooming the garlic. And it's just releasing those oils and getting heat to it. So you can chop up your um, garlic with a knife. I love using, this is a microplane. So I just use this to mince my garlic. You could use a garlic press. If you use a garlic press, there's nothing else you can use the garlic press for. It's just kind of a one trick pony. But this microplane I use to zest my lemons, limes, and oranges. I use it to grate my garlic. I'll use it to grate uh, nutmeg. I will use it to grate my Parmesan cheese. So I'd rather have one tool that has many uses. Okay. So now that this is back up to temperature, I'm just going to add the garlic. So admittedly, when I left the store and we brought a literally truckload of uh, product over here. The only thing that I forgot was thyme, fresh thyme. But if you tasted the butternut squash uh, soup that I had made ahead of time, there was fresh thyme in it. So, there we go. So I add this. So this again, think about ways that you could uh, serve this and what vehicles or vessels you can put it in. This also works really good in a slow cooker to keep it. And then I'm adding one and a quarter cups of chicken stock. And the reason I put it in here is now I'm going to shake this and then you get every last little bit of my squash puree out. And then the last thing that we're going to add is just a little bit of heavy cream. And you know, if you have people that are really trying to watch their uh, waistline, you can leave the heavy cream off. But it does uh, finish it off with a nice richness. So you can use this. You can leave this just like this with the uh, sal or the onions whole. It's also really nice if you use a, either an immersion blender or put this into a blender and puree it. So it's really a nice. Uh, smooth and thick soup. And I'm going to finish it off with just a little heavy cream. So this you can make a couple of days ahead. All you have to do is, I would leave, I would not add the heavy cream until you're just about ready to serve it. And that's how easy it is to make some butternut squash soup. So now we are moving on to dessert. And if you had a chance to taste our ooey gooey pumpkin bars, I do want to let you know that the, there are nuts in it. So if anybody has a nut allergy. But I'm going to do a little switch up here. And I'm taking down my, there we go. Oops. There we go. Oops. Let's do this. Except, all right, I do need this because I need to melt butter. 
So there we go. Okay, so I'm going to put this off to the side here and get some butter melting. So we're just not going to pay any attention how much butter's in this little dessert. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of uh, pumpkin pie, but I love these ooey gooey pumpkin bars. So I am going to take, let's see if I can turn this around so everybody can see. We're going to make a crust. And I am using one egg. And you always want to break your egg into something that if you get the shells in, you can pull the shells out. If I put my mix into my bowl and now break my egg in here, if not, if I wind up with shells, you can't find it. So it's always good to use the uh, one extra bowl. And what I'm using here for the crust is our um, Williams-Sonoma, it's our um, pecan pumpkin quick bread. And I'm going to start to mix this up. I'm going to add the melted butter and I'm going to prepare a 9 by 13 pan. And then I'm going to pull everything else over here for the topping. So I'm going to start, I've got three eggs that I'm going to use for the topping. There's one. If you hit two eggs together, only one breaks. So it's a unique way of uh, breaking eggs. So I've got three eggs here. Okay, I'm going to add my melted butter. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead because I need another stick of butter for my topping. So that's going to start melting. So this is just getting crumbly, kind of like a graham cracker uh, crust that you would use, make for cheesecake. I'm looking at this backwards, so I thought I was turning it off when I was actually turning it up. Okay. So I'm going to take this and just put this right down. See how crumbly it is? Let me get this out of the way. There you go. So I wash my hands frequently when I cook because I think hands are your best tools. I will also sometimes use the uh, plastic gloves. I use those in my kitchen. And that's a good way to uh, be safe and sanitary and not have to wash your hands so much. Okay, so I've just put that and press it down so it's nice and even. And then for the filling, I'm going to take that off. I have one package of cream cheese. So here's the second bowl so I don't have to wash. I have that bowl. I'm going to reuse this right away. I've got a package of cream cheese at room temperature. So here's a trick if you needed cream cheese at room temperature, but oops, you forgot to take it out of your uh, refrigerator. This is a uh, waterproof package, so I just take, take it out of the uh, cardboard container and just put this right into a little bowl with warm water on it. That's going to help, um, help bring it to room temperature quickly. I'm going to use, this is actually our, oops, Pecan pumpkin butter. You have to go to the gym more frequently. Mm 
Okay. See what happens on TV? I do need, yikes. There we go, perfect. I've got it. So it's, this, is, this recipe uses our pumpkin bread and our pumpkin butter. And I'm gonna add this to the mixer and start mixing this together. So this just gives a nice variation instead of the traditional pumpkin bread. I'm gonna add. So we're gonna um, mix that together until it's smooth. And then I have, I'm gonna add the eggs. Calls for 15 ounces of powdered sugar, but this is a 16 ounce pack and I'm just using the whole pack. Then we're gonna add some vanilla and some cinnamon. And I'm just gonna put these in with the eggs. I've got a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. And I've got one teaspoon of vanilla. All right, so we're gonna call this smooth. Got my butter. So I'm adding eggs, vanilla, the butter, the cinnamon. I'm going to turn this down. There we go. And my butter. And we're going to blend this until this is smooth. And then we are going to add our confectionery sugar. And then this is, this is what gives that ooey gooey pumpkin bar the like, pudding-like consistency. So again, everything on one tray. You can set this up ahead of time. If you have these, this is called a half sheet pan. If you have several of these ha half sheet pans in your kitchen, you line them up against your counter and put all of your ingredients with the recipe. Now you know that everything is together and you have everything that you need. All right, so I'm just going to lift this up real quick and scrape down the sides. And then we will finish this off and this is gonna go right over the top. So we're going to call this good to go. Take this. Let me lock that. Put that there. Well, it is a little challenging when you're not working in a kitchen. All right. And then I'm just going to pour this over the top. And then this gets baked at 350 for between 40 and 50 minutes. And every oven's different, and it does make a difference whether you're baking in a, uh, oops, in a metal container or a uh, stone container. But that goes into your oven, and then it's this ooey gooey deliciousness that I hope you all got a taste and a sample of. I think, I think we're in the process of winding up a little bit. I have just one more real quick, just so that you know what we did with our tastings and our sample is one of my favorite things about the holiday is cranberry relish. But I like, I use cranberry relish for everything except a side dish at uh, uh, the holidays. I will use it on turkey sandwiches, I will put it over a, a pork tenderloin, reduce it with a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and I always have a jar of the William Sonoma cranberry relish. I always have a couple of jars in my pantry. When somebody calls you and wants you over for dinner and you need just a really quick uh, appetizer and you don't want to go to any fuss, you always have a couple of containers of cheese, cream cheese. Everybody always has some crackers at home. 
So this is how easy your appetizer is. Smear the cream cheese on the cracker. Top it with your cranberry relish. And they will ask you to bring this every year. <laughs> and see how easy it is? So, you know, as a chef, I really prefer to cook things from scratch and to make my own things, but there's nothing wrong with having a couple of pre-made, ready-to-go items in your pantry, whether you're a chef or just a home, home cook. So this is going to get the fall season and the holidays off to a really great start. This is really my favorite appetizer. So. So we do want to give you an opportunity to do some hands-on if you're interested in the spiralizer. And we want to uh, go ahead and do our uh, giveaway of the spiralizer. So I'm excited to do that. I'm going to grab that okay. and do that right now. And then I think Jeremiah is helping now to pass out some of the uh, samples of the hot items, the stuffing, and the zucchini noodles. So thank you so much for your attention. This has really been fun. I hope everybody got some good ideas. I would love to see you at our uh, location at 12 Oaks Mall. We're on the upper level just outside of Lord & Taylor. We do regular cooking classes. I don't teach all of them, but I do teach a good uh, number of them. So I would love to see you down the road there. Very good, and Donna, thank you so much for this a wonderful presentation. I loved all the cooking ahead ideas, and the recipes were just delicious. This does conclude our presentation, and after we're done, she will be doing the raffling and the giveaway and the hands-on demonstrations. Now, this is another reminder for people who are watching at home and those in attendance. Please do get on the library website to find more about the Friends and also about upcoming events and programs. That's www.wblib.org. Thank you so much for joining us for our What's Cooking presentation, and good night. <laughs>